Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by TokenMetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto now, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And of course, if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Our goal is to get to 500 likes on the stream and 1,000 likes per video. So help us get there, please. Today, we're going to feature Bitcoin, Ethereum, both a tactical view and an on-chain and derivatives point of view, as well as give you three or four altcoins that may be topping and three or four altcoins that have a shot at going up. So let's take a look at who's on the stream and welcome everybody. Okay, we have Chase, right? We have House, hello. Megan is here from Boston, welcome. Okay, Hoff, good day everyone, right? Boss Nova, right? I think I saw Aiken, Flip Burger, okay? We have Orlando, Oklahoma, right? We have somebody asking when moon, we'll get to that, all right? <clears throat> We have Bangladesh, Salt Lake City, Cincinnati again, India up late at night, okay? Uh, Pennsylvania here, Orlando. All right, all our friends from all over the world are coming on in, right? House Music Cyprus, thank you, I appreciate that. Let's all hit the like button. Russ Berg from Phoenix is here. All right, let's get started. Let's rock into your market update. BTC parabolic. What? Naples, New York is going, really? Parabolic? Can you believe he's saying that? Well, believe it. Because there's a lot of evidence showing that BTC and possibly ETH along with it could really rock. So Taz is here. Welcome. Right. And we've got places like Turkey and Halifax. All right. Marco just got done watching yesterday's update. Well, sir, we appreciate the double dip. Welcome to the show. Can altcoins, the big ones like ETH, Solana, and even Bitcoin, can they go straight up for most of the month of April? Let's check it out. Brief administrative announcement, Token Metrics customers have been getting emails about AstraDAO. Those emails are real. AstraDAO is a DeFi protocol supported by Token Metrics. It is not a Token Metrics token. It's not owned by us. By April 7th, you need to have KYC filled out, a whitelist form filled out, and an ETH address that's not on an exchange, okay? The deadline for that is April 7th. Now let's kick into legacy and macro. Will interest rates ever stop going up, right? Like when is enough enough? We don't even know, right? The new level I'm drawing in the 10-year note yield is 258. If the 10-year note yield goes through 258, then, you know, it's sort of like... Uh, you know, I don't even know what to say, okay? Because interest rates won't stop going up. Now, if they do stop going up, that massively benefits crypto or if their ascent is orderly. Because lately, the ascent in, in, in rates has not been orderly. It's been vertical. So we're looking, crypto is looking for some help from the macro world. This is the European 10-year note yield, okay? So it's a measure of where EU government bonds are. This went from negative 
40 basis points to positive 62 basis points. 62 basis points is resistance. It's EU10Y on TradingView. So we're looking for rates to at least slow down when they're rising. Preferably a temporary top would be amazing for crypto. Now, S&P futures. Ugh. On one hand, these things are way too close to their all-time high versus crypto. I mean, if stocks are up here, how could crypto not be up there in terms of, you know, I mean, when I look at this, I'm like, yeah, Bitcoin should be at 57K. It's as simple as that. So either Bitcoin's got to go up or stocks have to go down. If stocks don't go down or interest rates are stable, then Bitcoin can go up a lot. A, a lot, right? I mean, 45 Bitcoin, 45K Bitcoin and like, you know, 34 or 3,500 ETH is cheap, period. And that's the market update. No, kidding. Okay. I mean, that's just how I feel about it. And when I look at the charts, we'll go through the on-chain data and all that stuff. So don't go anywhere. All right. Galaxy Digital. Okay. This is a daily chart of Mike Novogratz's famous crypto hedge fund. I would be happy if Galaxy Digital was above 2307. So GLXY on your trading view, you want to see it above 2307. If you get that, particularly during Bitcoin Miami, right? If you start to see these crypto hedge funds and related equities perk up off Bitcoin Miami, it can be a sign that the big Bitcoin up move is on soon. Now, speaking of on soon, okay, Bitcoin eight hour chart. So pretty boring, 45K support, 46.8, right, is resistance. If Bitcoin can get above 46.8, it can go, okay? So while we're sort of looking at the Bitcoin chart, we have VeChain Army from Greece is here, welcome. DeFi Ryan, okay, L Wright Sr., hello from Australia, okay? And <laughs> is it a good idea to keep Polkadot? We will do interoperability soon, soon. All right, now let's, let's go, let's go like, uh, I don't know, granular. Or let's like zoom in on Bitcoin. Yes, we are going to the 90-minute chart. So just be advised, if you're watching this video two days from now, okay, this chart will have changed. So this is the 90-minute chart of Bitcoin. So resistance at 47,200, support at 45,600. Okay, that's just the box based on DeMarc work that it's been traveling in. Now, in the event that this is not the final dip, I think it is. But if it's not the final dip, then a move to 43,500 is possible, right? That would only have to be triggered by either something crazy on the geopolitical front or a massive rise in interest rates because of commodity shortages or inflation. Simple as that, all right? 43,500 would be the absolute juicy buy point. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to be patient, particularly if you were looking to use leverage, not investment advice. Always know what your risk profile is and never risk blowing out your whole account. Now let's talk glass node on chain type of metrics. This is the Bitcoin futures funding rate. Okay. So in crypto futures, right, when everybody's bullish, you know, the longs have to pay kind of a premium, right, to hold the position. And when everything is bearish, the shorts have to pay the premium. That's how I look at it. Now, if you go to the bottom left-hand corner, the last time crypto was down, right, you had a red funding rate in Bitcoin from June until August. So you had three months of a really negative funding rate. Now, in the far right hand, the bottom right hand corner, you have the recent range. Now it looks different, okay? The other one was at the bottom of a massive crash, 
okay? This one was at the bottom of a crash, but it took the form of a dead range. Matter of fact, the last three months have reminded me of all of 2019, where people got so frustrated, right? Frequently, when it would go down, people would get bearish. There was some hope and some green, but the market never went anywhere. However, what we're starting to see is we're starting to see those green bars perk up, okay? So looking at the ETH funding rate, just like zooming in at where we are now, ETH's been able to put together like a whole bunch of green days in a row with like that funding rate rising and rising, indicating that people are willing to get long, right? More long each day. So as ETH holds, right, confidence is building. Now, some people, if you believe we're still in a range trading environment, would be like, oh my God, GTFO, right? Everyone's bullish, get out. That's not an unreasonable that's not an unreasonable statement, right? My opinion, right? The token metrics, you know, AI along with my charts would indicate that building bullishness is in fact bullish because a trend is starting. So if you look at the ETH funding rate, big picture, you're going to see something similar. Bottom left-hand corner, June to August last year, Everybody going, oh my God, get out. Okay, this year, right? Jan to March, right? NFTs down, everybody bearish, right? Lots of hedging in ETH. And then ETH kind of like sprouts green a little bit. Now, back in August, when, you know, ETH sprouted green, you see those two black arrows? You know, once ETH started to sprout green and stay green, ETH started to move up, okay? And I just saw a, a data point that said, you know, ETH is one of the most talked about cryptocurrencies, you know, on YouTube, right? And, you know, it's almost boring what I've been saying. is like, you know, ETH should be at a new high. When inflation is high, ETH goes up in the past, right? Now, you know, the Fed is trying to do its job. So maybe that's what's got ETH spooked, but... You know, the Fed hiking rates is not going to impair liquidity to where people aren't going to want to participate in the future of money, right? In other words, if stocks are still up, if stocks are stable, why is no one buying ETH? Why is no one buying Bitcoin? More on that later, along with altcoins. So with ETH, right, they were just kind of hammering it the way they were yesterday. You had a 13 top on the 90-minute chart. So again... If you're watching this video three days from now, this is not the most relevant chart anymore. But there is support at 3410, right? And there is support at 3300. Now, could they hit it to 3300? And they might. But why would they? I mean, unless there's a bond market calamity, like what is the rationale for ETH below 3400? I can't find it. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but I can't find it. Now, psychologically, let's talk about the real pivot levels for trading. You know, 3450 is a very important point in ETH. This is like the hidden pivot method. I think if 3450 holds, you could turn around and see ETH bounce to 3700. So, you know, you can see the way this thing is trading, right? Like alts go way up and alts correct. And then Bitcoin and ETH, they look terrible. They're down 2%. And they look like they're going to fall apart, but then they just sort of stop and glide back. Okay. 3450 in ETH, room, right? <clears throat> higher highs, right? Higher lows. Uh, the trend line, you know, trend line was at, you know, just below 11. And then room seems to resume, right? If it takes out 1238, it's going to go much higher. Rune has been a leading indicator for the whole market. You know, Rune was off to the races all of March. So if Rune's going up, go, if Rune is going up, the market can go up. Okay, let's look at ETH on a daily chart. ETH is trapped between 3510 and 3393, right? Everyone's selling at 3500. That's where the bears make their bets. And the bulls are in the 3400 neighborhood. Okay. 
I am okay with ETH going sideways. I don't think it's going to go sideways for long, but I'm okay with this quiet consolidation because the market bored everyone to death for three months. Now it's scaring everyone to death because it's at its highs and everybody's looking for a correction or worried it's going to go down because that's what happened in the range trading period, but we're not in the range trading period, in my opinion, not investment advice. Okay, let's talk about Solana. So Solana mooned, right? We were on this. We said 136 was a big point, just about any type of chart you look at. This is like DeMarc work. And then there's support at 125. I would love to see 125 or 118 hold. I don't think there's going to be that big of a dip in Solana, you know, unless interest rates rise and Bitcoin goes to 4,350 or 4,000. 43,500, excuse me. So 136, 125 in Solana. Okay. So we have Estonia, Dubai, and Mexico from here. Welcome. Right. Welcome. All right. We have near protocol. Now, 17 was the level we discussed earlier. It seems to have stopped there. Okay. You have a DeMarc nine top coming up. We'll look at that closer later. Now, one thing that I find interesting about Nier is I wonder if this thing can catch everybody off guard. You got a lot of people selling at 17, which is a, a, a reasonable level. But I'm actually wondering if it pays to be a pig that if Bitcoin takes off, Nier could go to 20. So I'm going to allow myself, even if Nier is up here, to be a little bit of a moon boy and say, you know what? Maybe you can hold on from 20. Now let's talk about some altcoins that may have topped out. Okay, the hidden pivot method shows Audius. I know it's down a lot today, but there was a lot of resistance up there in retrospect at $1.73. So if you've been trapped in that position, right? Now might be the time to make a move if you've got to adjust your position. Better than doing it at 65 cents. Okay. Cello is another coin that has absolutely moved. Okay. There is resistance at $4.94. So if you were able to catch this, if it doesn't go back above $4.94, it could be a top or the sign of consolidation is needed. Conversely, if it takes out $4.94, then you know a mega uptrend is in place. Now, RMRK is up today, probably the only metaverse coin we didn't talk about. Duh. Okay. So it's up 11%, probably because no one was talking about it. Right. Now, that resistance there is 2359. So if you're an RMRK bull, you can look for 2359. All right. So Shizzy L says, would you go long on BTC for the Bitcoin conference? Rumors of Apple and Strike limping up, linking up for Apple Pay. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Okay. Very possible. All right. I think with Bitcoin Miami going on, right, it gives, it gives Bitcoin a buzz that it normally doesn't have, right? People think it's boomer coin. They're much more interested in small altcoins. I do think there could be an announcement, although, you know, I'm a chart guy. So I just sort of imagine what the catalyst is going to be. Okay. It may come out of the conference. It may come somewhere else. I just think you got to watch out for waking up one day and having Bitcoin really smoke, like having a five or 8% update. Okay. Vulcan. All right, now Vulcan has been rampaging to the upside after bottoming at eight. Okay, I've heard people talk about a possible Coinbase listing. Okay, there's resistance at 1904. So if Vulcan takes out 1904, then you've got a much bigger uptrend. If it can't take out 1904, it may be time to take the money or adjust your position. Now let's go back to Bitcoin with the token metrics monthly indices. Believe it or not, we actually produce indices that give you an idea of what we think based on our AI are the best investments for the next month. <clears throat> so there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to go through all of it. 
right? Interoperability folks will probably be happy that in the top left, it's 8% Polkadot, okay? Now, what, I, what caught my attention was that it's allocating 20% to Bitcoin and 7% to wrapped Bitcoin. So this is the Coinbase monthly index. That's, you know, we're an altcoin firm. We're searching for altcoins, but this is allocating 27% to Bitcoin. Now, if you look at the Kraken index, right? The Kraken monthly index, Bitcoin plus a variation of Bitcoin accounts for 30%, right? XRP fans will no doubt be happy that 7% of the index is in XRP and there's an 11% allocation to privacy coins, right? Now, if you look at the Kraken daily index, so now we're looking, we're going to the other end of the spectrum and saying, what's the AI popping up with every day? And what you want to see, if you have a token metric subscription, is you want to see a coin if it shows up in the index, kind of like day after day after day. That's an indication that, you know, when your monthly and your daily kind of mix together along with some charts, then you can go with it. So I'm showing Bitcoin at 30%. Wrapped Bitcoin at 12% and Solana at 30%. So two big coins, Solana and Bitcoin, are making up 72% of our kind of fast money trading index. On the Coinbase index, it's 75% Bitcoin, a variation of Bitcoin and Solana, right? So bigger could be better. Right, you saw some of the small altcoins top out, and this may be like stocks where the little coins may be leading the big coins. Small caps in stocks rally before the big caps do. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin dominance, right? A very odd metric, pretty much does nothing but go down, right? Except for the occasional Bitcoin moonshot. So I'm noticing, at least on TradingView, btc.d, there's support for Bitcoin dominance right around 41%. Now, if Bitcoin dominance goes through 41%, I don't think anybody watching the show is going to complain, okay? No one's going to complain, all right? Because that means altcoins are going up. But if 41.4% does hold, you could have a four or five day monster move in Bitcoin, right? In other words, this whole future of money trade has not been done yet. Or the new monetary order trade has not been done yet. Okay, Coinbase's stock. Remember how we look at Galaxy? Coinbase is interesting to me, right? You had a bullish downward sloping wedge right? Which means bears are trying to like push it down, push it down, push it down. And then they go, okay, you know what? I give up. Then it breaks out. It comes back. They try to push it down one more time. And then guess what? Their arms get tired and then they just let it go. So it seems to make sense that if Bitcoin and Solana would smoke to the upside, that Galaxy Digital and Coinbase's stock might turn around and go up, which is interesting because as of April 5th, midday, right? They're, they're just, you know, they're taking the monkey hammer to Coinbase's stock. They're smashing it. Okay. You know, buy on red, right? Not investment advice. If you're wrong, okay, you know, you can put a stop in. But if you're right and Bitcoin turns around and goes up, you know, you could be looking at Coinbase's stock at 240. Because that's where like the, the big give up trade started from. Right, crypto.com, another kind of index exposure to crypto. I had a lot of people asking about this, and then no one asked about it. 47 cents seems to be an interesting support point. A lot of people selling at 50 cents, you know, and I'm starting to wonder whether or not, you know, people are like, okay, yeah, this bounced, but I'm, I'm wondering if people are like, hey, you know, everyone's given up on crypto mooning. Right, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. I mean, everybody's kind of indifferent. I'm like, no, no, wait a minute. Coinbase's stock, crypto.com looks okay. 
Now for our interoperability, Polkadot, Adam, you know, Cosmos people who are suffering, Ren has actually popped up. Okay, if Ren holds above 48 cents, it could obviously be good for Ren, but the interoperability trade could wake up. So, you know, other than the fact that there's support in Polkadot in the 2021 area, there hasn't been much to say about the layer zero world until Ren started moving. Last time, Ren led the move. So if Ren continues to lead, great, great, right? It may be time to start looking at the layer zeros. If not, all right, then we're back in the mud, and that is the market update. All right. Frederick, welcome. I'm glad you were able to tune in live. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Somebody is saying, not sure near is agreeing with my idea of 20, right? Which must mean they're smacking it good today, right? The best days to be bullish on TV, I have found, are days when it's getting hammered, right? It's, it's easy. It's easy to be a moon boy when it's going up. I'm trying to get to a place where, you know, I'm adding value and giving you ideas, right? Even when the market is going down. So let's just take a look. Let's just start by looking at ETH. So this was a five wave top at 3,570. Okay. A, B. So there might be a new low. You might get a C wave to 3,400. Okay. The title of the video is grab it on the last dip. That could be today or overnight. All right. But in my mind, you want to be grabbing this if you can. Okay. Bitcoin on a daily chart, on a, on a four hour chart is going sideways. Now let's get to a request page. See how we're doing. See if I got egg all over my face in near. Okay. So this is near on a daily chart, right? Approaching a nine top, going to get there soon. Sometimes these coins actually start to do that counter trend move before the nine top comes up. Okay, so in near, you know, it's, it's obviously it's gone up a lot. It's overbought. It corrects. And the support level that's relevant is say 1610. So if near goes down and test 1610, right? Because it tried that over here on the fourth. If it goes down there again and holds, you may get the move to 20. You may. All right. So let's get to what I know people are interested in, which is their requests. Okay. Let's start out with VGX. What do I do with VGX? By the way, as somebody is noting in the comments, folks, on-demand TA is available where? Nowhere except here. So slam on that like button, right? Our boss looks at the statistics. So we work for a company. Hit the like button. Now, in VGX, okay, there's support at $1.55, right? This is the daily chart. So it mooned. It hit resistance and now it's coming back down. Now let's look at the four hour chart because as I always tell people, what you want to see is you want to see buyers coming back in. All right, now let's try to draw a retracement here. Okay, 62% of the whole up move is $1.77, all right? The way I like to say it is you want to see something hold above its 62% retracement. Now, naturally, naturally, I'm not the only person who knows that. So what the market loves to do, like in VGX, is, uh, you know, spend a day and a half stopping everyone out below the 62% level. So if it gets above $1.77, you hold it, right? If it takes out the 76% at $1.66, then it's over. I have seen repeatedly 
that they run stops below these levels, right? Let's go to the 90 minute chart. They run stops below these levels and then they bring it back. So on the 90 minute chart, you've got the 13 bottom in. Okay. So if they're running stops and they puke everyone out and they get the 13 bottom, there's some hope that VGX comes back. Okay. Not investment advice, but I don't see any harm in waiting a day or two. Hey, okay, don't have HTR on this. Okay, CHR coming up. All right, so this is your 90-minute chart. Obviously, a, a nice shot up here and then a sideways range that doesn't tell you much. Okay, so you've got like a warning signal here about corrective activity. Let's go back to the 90-minute chart for CHR. So what it looks like here is the sideways consolidation is A, B, and there could be a move to a C. Okay, so 57 cents would be kind of like the juicy buy level, right? And you want to see it hold 57 cents. Again, this is a 90-minute chart, so the visual may not last, obviously, but the support at 57 cents will. Okay, people suffering in Matic, wondering, will it ever go up in my lifetime ever again? Okay, this coin waits people out. It, it just tortures you, right? So we have the, the, the sliding, grinding, lower prices. I would want to see Matic recover above $1.62 to generate at least some, some excitement. Support is at $1.58, and I don't see a point of dumping it in front of that number, right? You want to buy support, especially if, if the coin actually still is in range trading mode, okay? A daily chart of Matic doesn't tell you really anything. It just tells you that it's just sideways. So you probably have to go to an intraday chart, right? And like I said, you know, don't sell, if something is in a range, this is what we were talking about ETH at 2,500. Don't sell stuff at the bottom end of the range. Don't. I mean, yeah, you got to use a stop. You have to protect yourself, but don't give up on stuff that's, you know, right there at the bottom end of the range, okay? Sell in May and go away. Is that still valid? Yes, I, I do think it's valid, but it may go into May before you actually have to sell. So I think it actually, we have a shot at a positive April. Okay, let's see if Ali is here. No, Ali is not here, okay? Now, I wasn't able to get HTR. Okay, so here's HTR on a four-hour chart. So nice rally. Okay, so it looks like in HTR, Hathor, the resistance was at 0.83. Okay, that, that probably should be the top. And if it's not, it's off to the races. So if you made a bunch of money in this, right? I'm not saying it's no good. I'm just saying 83 cents is going to be resistance. Now, if it busts through 83 cents, then you know it's the real deal. Okay, somebody asking for BNB. As me guys are back, okay? By the way, for people who tune into the request part, okay, welcome, welcome, right? Please hit the like button. Hit the like button, right? <clears throat> On Demand TA is available where on YouTube? Right here. Right here. Okay. Binance Coin, again, uh, a possible five-wave top. So 
probably overbought, been doing quite well. Okay, so on an intraday chart, it's overbought. Now, let's get to what there's a 13 top on the daily chart, but guess what? No one cares. Now, you've got people taking profits. There's resistance at 480. So, you know, there's kind of a reason to take your money. But guess what? Now, how can Bitcoin be good? Galaxy and Coinbase be interesting. Crypto.com be interesting, right? What happens if Binance Coin doesn't retrace? This is what I'm, this is actually a great example of what I'm talking about. So this is the weekly chart of Binance, okay? What happens with this thing, right? If, if Binance Coin just kind of takes off, Right? I mean, where, where's resistance in Binance coin? You know, 649 at the old high. You had nine, you know, you had like nine to 10 down weeks for the nine bottom. What happens if you have five more up weeks? So you got to watch Binance coin like Bitcoin closely. If, if there are these topping signals and they don't work, then your time frame of question is is the weekly chart okay so people are getting hurt in solana or at least that's what they're saying right so solana if it gets above 137 it's got a shot at going much much higher so you know if you fomo into solana at 140 uh i think you wait to see if it takes out 136 because i think there are going to be buyers below the market that's just me Right, Avalanche, okay, Avalanche is creating some pain out there. So on the four-hour chart, it might be an ABC correction. So you might have to tolerate 90, right? So this is A, B, C down to 90. Now, if that is going to kill you, then you might want to adjust your position. Now, big picture, I think Avalanche is going up. This is my opinion, right? There's a big technical point at $94.90. And there has been a battle in Avalanche at this level for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. So, you know, bulls and bears are hammering it out, right? There's a volatility warning here. There's a nine top. If you believe Avalanche is in a range, then it's probably going to go to 82. Personally, I want to see how it acts at 94.90 because if there's only one dip left or if today is the dip, then I think this can just go up because I think the age of the big coin is coming for the month of April, okay? Hey, Rose... Luna, somebody says resistance is futile. I did see that well over 100. Okay. So entry levels for rows. Well, so 32 cents is the key resistance level. That was the start of the give up trade. Now, the fact that they took that out to me is seems significant. Okay, I'm going to a four-hour chart, right? Okay, so this looks like some sort of correction is needed. Resistance is at 32 cents. Now, that's not what you're asking me. I know you're asking, where do I get in? Okay, so this is the 90-minute chart, right? Right, so if you believe this thing is on a freight train move, Right, it's come down here to 31 cents a couple times. It was the initial high, it failed here, then it broke out above it, then it came down here twice. So if there are buyers in rows, you should see them at 31 cents. Now, if you don't see them at 31 cents, okay, probably the next stop might be this old high 
right? Around 29 cents. So that would be an attack of the fourth wave bottom. Personally, again, the, these, these layer ones, these bigger altcoins, yeah, they don't look so good today. Yeah, they didn't look good yesterday, but they came back, right? It's not easy to buy these things when they're just off their high. It probably would be easier to buy them if they washed them out. But the best trades are the toughest trades. So, yeah, Bitcoin went to 43500 Well, that'd be awesome, right? We'd get cheaper Bitcoin. But, you know, why would that happen? Other than the fact that you're doing an ABC correction, which is possible. Okay. All right. So, Luna... Somebody's basically saying, don't get in front of Luna. And I've tried not to. Okay. So on a 90 minute chart, there's resistance at 120. Okay. If we're doing this, this is like, we're calling this the roadmap on the show now. Right. Now, if you look at the four hour chart, you've got the nine top, right? So that's what's called the setup phase. And then there's a dip. And then you have what's called the countdown phase. So the nine is the first part of the trend. And then the one through 13 is the big part of the trend. So, you know, you could have another two days of action. Whereas if they buy the dip in Luna, they could take it up to 125. Okay. Now, <laughs> this picture is a little bit different. So, you have a 13 top and you have a nine top at the same time. So that would be an indication that, you know, this is a little toppy. Now, if you have such an indication and it doesn't work, right? If the bearish signal breaks, then Luna is probably going to take out 130 and head for 144. Now, when I look at this, because this is kind of like backed by, you know, it's, it's almost like the ultimate stable coin play. I'm not going to say anything bad about Luna because all it does is go up. What I might suggest is when Luna leads, the rest of the market follows. Luna and Rune, I mean, the market did nothing this year. Nothing. And Luna starting in February, did nothing but go up. So I think it may be a leading indicator of the rest of the market. So not necessarily a bearish prediction for Luna, but the DeMarc signals may be telling you that Luna has done its thing, and now it's time for the market to do its thing. Okay? All right. Algo. Okay? The coin that... Venture capitalists can't stop selling at a dollar. Let's see where it is. Drum roll, please. Okay. And there are the venture capitalists selling it at a dollar. Okay. The good news is in Algorand on the daily chart, support is at 85 cents. So let's look at the 240 minute chart or the four hour chart to see what we can get on Algorand. <clears throat> Okay, so Algorand corrects, and the question is, you know, is there hope that this turns around and goes up? Now, what you want to see is you want to see Algorand act like even though they're selling it at a dollar, people want to come back in. So you can argue this is some type of head and shoulders top up here, right, with a target of, say, 80 cents. That said, if Algorand can get itself back above 87 cents, right, that could be constructive. Let's take a different approach to the FIB retracement. So the fact that it's holding 86 cents is constructive, and 83 cents would be the best support point. Again, with some of these altcoins, right, particularly ones that have been hammered, I, I'm inclined to take the profits and stuff that's gone up and buy the stuff that's down. Okay, Bitcoin Miami equals volatility ahead. Maybe. Okay, uh, there's a lot of people hitting Google looking for what's happening at Bitcoin Miami. 
right? I don't know if you need to go to a Bitcoin conference to know that Bitcoin is the future of money or is a part of a new monetary order. Okay, so OMG goes up huge, tops out. The 13th top was actually the 31st and the final thrust was on the second. So some sort of corrective activity is going to happen here. It could be as deep as 508. Let's look at the daily chart, see what's happening there. Okay, so OMG hits real resistance at 630 and comes off with a volatility warning. So I would say if you got, you know, if you if this thing went from, you know, 325 to 625 and you made money, you know, this market has paid you to take profits in stuff that one X's. Okay. That said, if you want to just hold it, which, you know, I don't blame you for. Like if you're stressing about it, you take part of your position and you leave the rest of it. Okay. If, okay, OMG holds and gets back above 564, then that could be very constructive. Why? Because this is where the give up trade and the, the previous fourth wave was. So a lot of times when you take out the previous fourth wave, in other words, when you go back to where the give up trade started from and you take that out, that can be a bullish signal. So it might wait, it might pay to hang out and wait. Let's go to a 90 minute chart and just say, all right, you know, we're hitting it today. It's a red day. Everyone's taking profits. Of course they are, right? It's like gone up 100%, right? Now there's nothing here except maybe, you know, an hour and a half from now, you might see a nine bottom, right? And you do have an A, B, C correction. So it's possible that this thing is done washing everybody out and may recover, okay? FTM, LFG, someone's saying, right? MMC John, like that thinking. Like that thinking. By the way, speaking of thinking, while the computer is thinking, I know y'all are out there hitting the like button, right? I got 350 likes at the end of last stream, and I'm like, wait a minute. Let's go to 500. <clears throat> okay, FTM at $1.48 is good support on the 90-minute chart that's very short term. You have a 13 and a 9 bottom, and it looks like very soon you may have another 9 bottom. So Phantom DeFi, buy it or sell it, okay? You know, on a 4-hour chart, Okay, the previous high was a dollar forty-five, right? Then Phantom broke out and then came back down, and it's now testing a dollar forty-five. So this could be some sort of flag formation. Again, no one wanted it at a dollar, and they FOMO'd in at a dollar seventy. Hence the correction, right? Corrections are good; they're opportunities to get in. Okay, now Phantom. Not showing much on the daily chart, except there's good resistance. There's an upside target potentially at a dollar eighty-eight. All right now, Phantom Weekly, you've got a nine bottom here. Okay, so you had three up weeks. It's logical to see some sort of correction. So Dean is like, when God candle? I don't know, Dean. Hopefully soon, because I've been talking about it. Right. So we're either getting a God candle or everyone's getting stopped out to 43,500. Okay. Cosmos, everyone's suffering. Weekly chart sideways. Okay. Let's go to the four hour chart, see if anything is happening that would pique our interest. Okay. Nothing is piquing our interest on the four hour chart. Right. Because it like makes a new high at 33 and then comes off. Okay, now, however, that is interesting, okay? You know, you've got a trend line. It doesn't go all the way back, but it starts here, right? There's a flush through it. Then there's, you know, there's a lot of support at 30. 
So with Ren breaking out, with Cosmos at 30, right? Cosmos goes up and goes down 10%. Cosmos down 10% buyer seller. John Stewart says buy every five to 10% dip. You know, I like the way he thinks, all right? Not investment advice. So SLP, Okay, someone's asking for BSW and VVS. I'll do my best. Okay, now SLP, monster, monster move up here, nine top, and then it comes off. So, you know, this has actually acted very well with the mark signals. Okay, I would say... Okay, it's a little outside the box. But you may have some support where the market is right now. So it doesn't give you the granular detail on this. But if you were inclined to buy the dip, let me go back to my horizontal line here. Okay, you're noticing a pattern in these altcoins, right? They broke out, but they're coming back down and testing whether or not the ceiling is the floor. Okay, let's see if I can get BSW up here. Thank you for encouraging people to hit the like button. So BSW, okay, the nine bottom on the four hour chart, you got the nice pop, but it comes back down again. Okay, no action on the daily chart. Let's look at the 90-minute chart. Okay, so on a 90-minute chart, there's good support at $1.18, and it looks like people are eager to buy it there. There's resistance at $1.36, which is where you got the nine top and everyone was selling. Now, if you want to be crazy, okay, this move over here on the left side was the three-wave. This is the four-wave correction. And there could be a five wave new high. So whatever this is, if there's a catalyst, if they're selling it at a dollar 18, you might want to take a shot there with a stop looking for a new high. Hey, VVX, I don't have on this system. Hey, Chili's, I believe. Okay, Cardano Nation is here. Okay, let's go to the four-hour chart. All right, so in Chili's, the level it's got to get back above, whoops. Okay. 29 cents is a very relevant level. Okay, you do have an A, B, C correction. Right now, you can make an argument that this was a top, okay, like a permanent top, but I don't think that that's true because, again, you're being paid to buy these A, B, C corrections. Right. I mean, I, I'd be doing that in these smaller altcoins until it didn't work anymore. I mean, clearly we've shown earlier with things like Audius, you know, it's paid to take profits. And this is no exception, right? You have a big resistance point at 28 cents. You have a nine top after a huge FOMO rally. And the question is, is it going to hold? Okay. You could have four or five more sideways to down days because you got a volatility warning. Okay. But like I said, you want to take this thing from people on corrective days. So if they've already done the A, B, C correction, right? It looks like there was a lot of support right where the market is right now. And of course, naturally, at the bottom of the A, B, C correction, the bottom of the C, the end of the correction, 
Why is it the end of the correction? Because they run everyone's stop and everyone pukes it out. And that's what creates the bottom. Okay. Helium. People pumped up on this in the chat. I dig it. Okay. So helium likes to do these blowouts where, you know, it moons, it'll go up $5 and then drop three or four. Okay. So this is the four hour chart kind of looks like the corrections over, right? Helium would probably be better above 25, but it's not really backing off. I mean, helium hasn't been able to do anything either way. It gets above 25. It comes back down. It gets below 25. It goes back up. So helium looks to be stuck at 25. And the longer you get stuck at a level, the more likely it is to just stay stuck. Now, with that said, at the point where everyone gets annoyed, which I'm assuming is the point that we're at right now, right? Where everyone's like, okay, I'm over this, right? You've got to be above 2619. Sometimes when people get so frustrated, right? I mean, these, these candles, th this is not a good look here, folks. This is not a good look. Now, why is not a good look a good look? Well, it, it's not, but you can see everyone getting out, right? Sell, sell, sell. Everyone's selling. Well, if the sellers run out of ammo, right, and it goes through 26, then you got yourself a breakout, right? So I'm not really in the mood to give up on crypto. Yes, there are some things that are overdone. Yes, if you get 100 or 200% return, it might be a, a, a good look, right? It might be a good look to take your profits or some profits. Always pay yourself when you're right, okay? Staying stuck sounds like Matic. Been over it, been over it already, yes. Been over it in Matic. It's trading near the bottom end of a trading range near a dollar fifty-three, right? There's going to be a renaissance in layer two, probably after everybody gives up. Oh, I know everyone is looking for the thousand X in Matic. That's probably not the nature of a coin like Matic anymore, right? But one day there's going to be a renaissance in layer twos because that's the future of DeFi. Now, CKB, nothing is happening here. Okay. Support is where the market was on the 31st. So it tries to break out and then it corrects. You know, assuming that this is okay, this is probably the end of a corrective phase, right? Because it's, it's, it's retesting and, and, you know, the market is probing as to whether the prior ceiling is the floor V chain the coin I love to love seeing what the V chain army, right? Manuel, appreciate the love on that. Okay. So there's 13 tops on the four hour chart of V chain and it doesn't go anywhere. And anybody who was holding V chain suffered unbelievably, right? As this thing just sat down here after getting annihilated, right? As you can see. So, I mean, let's be intellectually honest. Let's draw like maybe a fib retracement here. Okay. So the good news for V chain is that it's building value on top of the 23% retracement of the entire down move. What does that mean? Well, it means there's support and every time it goes down below 8 cents, someone's buying it. Now, there's resistance at 8 cents, so V chain is like trapped. There's resistance and support almost in the same area. Now, if you suffered with V chain and you put up with it all the way down here, why give up now? I mean, if the market falls apart and something terrible happens to risk assets, Okay, fine. You have to adjust your position. Okay. New market update. Start over, right? But if you suffered with it, then why not hold on to it? Not investment advice. I mean, again, it's really hard. I couldn't get off the idea of V-Chain at four cents. 
I'm not inclined to change my mind now. Okay, Cardano on a daily chart. Okay, possible interesting FIB resistance retracements here. Okay, I still think Cardano has got room to go to $1.25. You know, it looks like it's taking a break because of this warning sign on the daily chart, but look at what this is doing all the way up and sideways. Now, is that annoying? Yes, it's annoying. Okay, is it is it better? Is it better than Cardano going down or doing nothing? Yes. Right. And if Cardano takes out a dollar 22, you know, it could make a big new high. You had the move to the nine top, right? One through nine, break down, frustrate everybody, and then boom. So I know catering to Cardano Nation is a good way to get popular on YouTube. Right. And I would like to be popular on YouTube, but I'm telling you, if you look at this Cardano charts, right? You don't have to be a popularity hog to say to yourself, hey, wait a minute. You know, this is a 13 and a nine bottom on a weekly chart, right? When you had the 13 top here at, at $3 or 270, you know, Cardano went down for, I don't know, nine months. So why would you give up on Cardano now? Matter of fact, why not just put it in the basket with Solana, ETH, and Bitcoin, right? Okay, somebody put in a super chat. James, if you put in a super chat, let us have it. Let us give us the symbol, okay? Okay, Phantom, I did, all right? Phantom, very close resistance, but not in the mood to take profits because of what the weekly chart looks like. Okay, so Chainlink, you got people asking every day, which is cool because people are out of patience in Chainlink too, right? In other words, First, the market wore you down by trading in a range. Then the market wore you down by going up and some coins are going up more than others. And the coins that don't go up are frustrating people, right? So Chainlink might have to go below 1680, I guess, if there's going to be a problem. Okay, that's what the 90 minute chart says. It also shows it's close to a DeMarc nine bottom. Okay. Okay. So chain link again in this expanding range. Right. Chain link has support at 1679. That's the 38% retracement. I think it would be more bullish if chain link took out. 1737. Okay, we're looking at spell. Okay, so very common theme here. Okay. The high from March 21st is now acting as support. So this is a four hour chart of spell. You know, I would view that as constructive, right? So this went up a lot, but you know, again, two prior highs from the 20th of March and the 1st of March, and it's holding as support. And this volatility warning is there, but you don't know this thing could turn around. It's gone one through five. There could be four more updates here. So, you know, somebody's noting that we have 300 likes. I know you guys are going to make me implement altcoin overtime again, right? Someone wants to know what's going on with, com with compound. Okay. So what goes on with compound is 
you know, a lot of these big DeFi coins, they launch, right? They're supposed to get the counter trend rally, but they have to FOMO in one last time. So again, 152 is support. They're retesting. They're retesting. Is that ceiling going to be the floor? Okay, you're getting the common theme. So somebody's like, oh my God, what's going on with synthetics? All right, it was up huge. Okay, this is the daily chart. Okay, you had a nine top here. So it's logical that you would get the counter trend rally. Support is at 608. So you got to remember, synthetics had a mind of its own, right? Synthetics was like, you know, it was like, you know, it just took off almost by itself. Okay. So you had like the double 13 top up near eight. Let's see what the fib retracements give us. All right. So what's going on with synthetics? Well, to me, it looks like a completely normal 38% retracement of the move off of its lows. Folks, how do you know you're in a bull market? If you can buy a dip and make money. So if 649 winds up holding in synthetics, and of course it looks terrible, right? Of course, just everyone's selling. Everybody who paid over six or, I'm sorry, everybody who paid over seven and a half is getting out, right? The worst case scenario is 547. That's the 62% retracement. I guess that would be accompanied by the market getting wrecked. But why is everyone selling, you know, unless the whole trade is over and it was nothing more than a bear market rally, you know, at the 38% retracement is where you're taking a shot, right? Okay. Mon Hardy says, I'm late. As I always say, you're not too early. You're not too late. You're right on time. Okay. Okay, sushi, same deal, right? The big question is, okay, the 50% retracement is at $4.10. You hit there yesterday on the four-hour chart, okay? This is one, two, three, four, and I think sushi can make a new high for this move. Okay, alpha, you know, the coin that makes you crazy at 20 cents and then launches itself, right, to 70 cents. And then the big question remains, okay, where is the support? Most likely the support in alpha is at 48 cents. And then that's where you might grab it and expect a new high, right? So if alpha is for real, right, you'll see support. It, they'll hit it. They always do right? And then boom. Okay. Am I going with amp bulls? Okay. In amp, there's a lot of support right where it is right now, midday, April, April 5th, near three cents. Hey, let's take a look at cake. Hey, this is the, the coin of the altcoin casino, as I like to call it. Resistance at 1257. That may wind up being the upside target. So pretty intense FOMO up to 11, uh, up to $11. Let's go to the daily chart. That's the four hour. Okay, so this looks like they attacked the resistance zone at $11, right? That is right where cake, you know, there's been a lot of activity at $11 in cake. First, it was a temporary bottom, and then it was like the high of a give up trade. 
So can Cake go higher? Uh, I don't know, honestly, right? Let's go to a 90-minute chart to see if we can get any type of direction. There's that sort of topping warning signal there, right? There's the 13 top on the 90-minute chart. And I guess what you want to see in Cake at a minimum is $9.30 or $9.12 acting as support. So it looks like they're going to attack support. Okay. Okay. Algorand, we did. Okay. Madrid is here. Welcome. Right. We have Waves and KDA. Okay. Again, Algorand on the 90 minute chart. Right. The 13 bottom gives you a bit of a rally. Okay. But then it comes back off. Why? Because everybody in Algorand sells at a dollar because that's where the venture capitalists all sell. Okay. Now, when it comes to the four hour chart, you know, is this old ceiling now a floor? Okay. 85 cents held once. Will it hold again? Because that was you know, the point where Algorand took off and then the venture capitalist distributed it at a dollar. So who's got the power in Algorand? The guy selling it at a dollar or people coming in to buy the dip? When will Algorand move? Well, I, I can't, I, I, I cannot figure that part out, right? It's going to need a, a major catalyst in order to go, okay? Decentraland, in the metaverse, all right. So, the big question in metaverse is are you in the mood to speculate? Support is at two dollars and 58 cents on the four hour chart. So and of course, they had to run stops at this level twice. They ran stops there. So if the central land is going to do anything, it may actually go up. Not investment advice, right? Sandbox may be a similar situation. Okay, so these, there are these volatility warning signs everywhere on altcoins. It's, it's a smart momentum indicator, right? All right. So is SNX backtesting or breaking down? I think it's retracing. Okay. I think most altcoins that mooned are retracing. They're trying to force you out, right? And it's actually kind of a warning, if anything, that Bitcoin could go up. Right, either that or they're going to wash everything out to 43,500, and that's the market update. Okay, Crypto Kitchen Australia is here. Okay, I know we have waves. I know there's been some kind of unbelievable price action in this coin. My God. Okay. So from 10 to 65, okay, there was your volatility warning and you got plenty of volatility. Okay. So the old high was in the neighborhood of 3339. Okay. Now with things like this, that go from eight to 65, you have to ask yourself, you know, if you chase this thing and you're in trouble, then you might want to manage risk accordingly. All right. The good news is there's support. Like I said, at this 3186. So you got a nine top and then one final thrust up. This is the four hour chart of waves. 
Then waves goes down, you get the nine bottom, and now they're doing one more big puke lower. Okay, so there is an argument to be made that, you know, this 31 area, right? This was like what they call the value zone. Then it gapped up and now it's come back. So if waves is any good, right? It's going to hold at 3186, right? It's going to hold at 3186. Okay, veracity. I don't know if I got that right. VRA. Okay, veracity going sideways on a four-hour chart after giving a 13 and a nine top. Okay, I, I think with this one, I like to look at the weekly. No, maybe it's the daily. Okay, so these horizontal support and resistance points have been serving us well, right? So VRA is probably in the middle of a range, right? So it hasn't really gone anywhere since March 28th. And it's just like what happened over here in February, right? It's the same range in the same place. So either this is a teacup and handle formation where you make this rounded bottom, then you have this awful chop, all right? So unless the market totally falls out of bed, if you've been trying to play this and trying to hold on, I don't know. Why not try to hold on? San Paulo is in the house. Yes, I, I have done rune, but not on this chart. Hey, rune is making higher highs and higher lows. Rune has been a great indicator for the whole market. So you have a 13 top here, right? You had a nine and then you had the, you know, the break and then you had the 13 top. So Rune has led the market as has Luna. Okay. Rune looks like it's due for a break. Okay. If it's due for a break and it doesn't break, it's probably going to go up. But the stuff that's been outperforming may take a break while other stuff goes up. That other stuff would be Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the like. So, you know, the four hour chart, it looks like people are taking profits in rune. And if you're patient, you might get it below 10. Okay. That that's how I would look at it. And lastly, we can do Sheeb. Okay. So you get the idea that they want to buy Sheeb. Right. It's above a DeMarc resistance, a, a DeMarc resistance point. Okay. From back on April 1. So let's go to Sheeb over here. So I just get the idea that they want to buy Sheeb. I just what it feels like. Right. So let's try some hidden pivot analysis in Sheeb and see what we get. Okay, so if Sheev taking out the zeros, I'm looking at 2642. Okay, there are, there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a narrative about Sheev that's out there. So if Sheev is maybe above 2642, right? Sheev has a shot at just going much higher, like all the way to 3200. Like you're probably dumbfounded. Like, wait a minute. Are the token metrics guys saying something positive about a meme coin? Um, yes, I am. Right. It's not showing up on tokenmetrics.com, but it's pretty clear that it looks like they want to buy this stuff. Okay. So you're saying, I'm confused. I thought the whole point of crypto was to get away from legacy equity markets and their manipulation. Yes, that is completely true, right? In other words, the legacy system has got cracks in it, right? The Fed cannot address shortages in commodity and commodities and war, 
and inflation that's driven by 15 years of money printing. So the only place to go to get away from that nonsense is crypto, which is why in conclusion, right? I'm saying that crypto is too cheap. Okay. I honestly, I, I have a hard time believing even if Bitcoin winds up at 43,500, that crypto is somehow left behind as equities go up and hold. Like, are you kidding? Right? It was as interest rates rise, like, yeah, that's not great for crypto historically. But where is everyone going to go to get protection from inflation? You listen to these guys on Twitter. They say, Bitcoin can't help you with inflation. Ethereum can't help you. Really? You can't get price appreciation? Where are you going to go to get upside returns? Stocks? Bonds? Hardly. Commodities? Okay, maybe. But is that trade done? Where are you going to go? Well, the answer is crypto. The answer is token metrics. And the answer is the market update. So if you haven't hit the like button, please do so. If you stayed until the end, we appreciate you. All right. I will be here tomorrow. That's it for today. All right. Aiken, thanks a lot. We appreciate everybody being here. Okay. Games galore. Getting everybody on that like button. Fernando, many thanks to you as well. All right. Taz and everybody else, Driftless Crypto, if you're out there watching the replay, we appreciate Megan and all the people who normally come in. Right. Bull Runner 76. Right, the regulars on the stream. Alan from PH. Take care. This is Bill Noble. I'll be here tomorrow.